The latest survey of global banks carried out by the Banker magazine reveals more about the relentless rise of China. The top two positions out of a thousand were taken by Beijing-based banks. This year, you know, we've seen the Chinese banks increase their stranglehold of the ranking, basically. So now you've got Chinese banks in the first and second positions, and you've got the four big state-owned Chinese banks in the top ten. And then apart from that, this is so we're ranked by tier one capital here. But apart from that, I mean, Chinese banks are also the most profitable because um, uh, the, the Chinese banks, those top four I mentioned, are the four most profitable banks in the world. And Chinese banks earn about 30 percent of total profits. The survey also shows global banking profits up by 20 percent, another positive sign of economic recovery. Global profits, total global profits grew 20% last year. So that's the first time we've seen a big increase like that since before the financial crisis. They were around about 750 billion before the financial crisis. Then they dipped a bit and they kind of sort of struggled and recovered uh, last year to where they were before the crisis. But this year we've seen a sort of 20% increase. So that's a massive uh, change. And that certainly seems to suggest that, you know, global banking is back to some kind of health. The findings underline the recovery in the Eurozone, but also show that U.S. banks are making a comeback. The U.S. authorities definitely handled the crisis much better than uh, we did in Europe. And, uh, you know, they put, uh, they fought, first of all, they forced the banks to come clean on their bad assets much earlier than, than banks did in the Eurozone. So immediately you had a picture of, you know, what are, what are the problems? And then they, they pushed them to recapitalize early. And then you've seen, because the U.S. economy has recovered much quicker than, uh, than, than Europe has, um, you know, we have seen the banks come back um, and they've done rather well in some cases. As you say, I mean, Wells Fargo, which is obviously a domestic uh, U.S. player, very efficient, did well out of the consolidation in the crisis, never had too many problems of its own making, uh, is in a rather good position. Other banks like... Um, you know, JP Morgan, where you're talking about a big investment banking arm, it's a bit more, uh, been a bit more challenging. And then they had, you know, different fines and things. So, I mean, the US banks have definitely suffered from, um, you know, having to sort out their corporate governance problems and having problems with the authorities, just the same way as we're seeing some of the European banks now. A couple of decades ago, Japanese banks dominated surveys like this. So, could the Chinese banks slip from the top if China's slowing economy? falls faster than expected. I expect that the Chinese banks will continue to be strong. Uh, there are headwinds in the Chinese economy. I mean, broadly that it's slowing down, it's got a property bubble that's melting, and it's got this, uh, this awful shadow banking sector, which could have reverberations on, on mainstream banking. On the upside, uh, Chinese banks are better capitalized than the Western banks were going into the financial crisis we've had here. Right. So if you look at capital adequacy ratios, you know, most of the Chinese banks have got, uh, you know, well in excess of what Basel III requires them to have. And they've got, you know, probably double what some of the banks had uh, going into the financial crisis, you know, in Europe and the U.S. So it would have to be a pretty strong hit to really unseat them.